Hey everybody, it's uh, Coach Neil. I got uh, Nikolai with me, and we're gonna do another technique here for Hayabusa's uh, social media. Okay. Now, what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna chain a couple techniques together, and I'm gonna start off by using a front face lock. Okay. Now, front face lock goes back a long ways, and there's been a couple ways to do it, but for me, there's only one real practical way to do it, and that's what I'm gonna show you today. Okay. And it's going to be from that kind of snap down position where I'm in a front headlock, you know, concept, okay? The biggest thing when, when you're here is you got to make sure that you're not going to give your hands for a two-on-one get-up or a soccer drag. Because that's the number one thing I'm going to do if I'm here and you reach in, okay? So you have to play these things properly, especially at the top guys. One way, you know, keep your limbs short. If you're gonna go for the front headlock, you have to have a good front headlock where you can have control and not giving your wrist away. There's things like quarter now shins. Those are good ways to protect my hand. The other thing is a front front uh, front face lock. Okay. And what this is gonna do, I'm gonna use it as a reversal, but you can finish it as a submission, okay? But I think in general it's better to be used as a reversal. It's a much higher percentage if you put this on there. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab Nikolai's tricep area, okay? And my, my left arm is gonna cross face. And I want the gun to go as low as possible. If I get under the chin, then I'll, it's, it's great too. But most of the time, I want to aim for right here. I want his bottom jaw. Because if his mouth is open, uh, I'll make him scream. Okay? Yeah, he's going to turn, he'll pray to turn over. Okay? I don't want to get high in the face. Because guys that are tough, they'll let you ding up their nose and stuff. You know, to kind of grind it out. So, when I'm here, I'm going to cross face right across. And I'm going to lock. Now when I lock, I'm going to pull his shoulder in with my hand, okay? So I go here, I'm going to lock tight. Now, there's, I can start to crank and try to finish, but we're going to focus on turning. I wouldn't be on my knees either. I would have, if I'm here, I'd have a lot of pressure, okay? I would have a lot of pressure. Now, what I'm going to do is he's going to go where the head goes. So, if I create this kind of pressure and drive into him, he's going to flip over. All right? You can also drop back with this and sit to get the turnover, but generally speaking, it's always better to be a little more hips down rather than hips up. So, I catch, I lock. Now I'm going to walk in and I'm going to crank. And Nikolai's going to dump over. Okay? I still have my grip. Now, from here, I lined up a perfect darce choke, okay? Perfect darce choke. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift on his head, and I'm gonna reach deep, slide my hand down, lock and claw up, paw as I can, and I'm gonna drive in and flex, okay? Now, I'm gonna go into some more detail about the darce or screw choke or bravo choke. Head back down, just on your side, where you were. Okay, the thing about it is this choke right here, some people have a natural feel for it. Others end up just neck cranking people and they end up giving up on it. You have to be able to troubleshoot your own technique. One of the first things to look at is where his shoulder is. I kind of, I want this here in between my pec muscles, right where my shoulder is, my chest are. That's where I want that on. Now, the other thing, see that, I'm going to spend some time here. You see that space he has from his neck to his shoulder? That's going to make your, the space you need to grab much larger. Okay, so what I want to do when I'm here is whether I'm like this or I'm like this, I want to bring his ear to his head. So in this case, I was here. That way, it's a little tighter circle when I grab. Okay, I don't have to reach around like this. I can actually get a good bite. 
Now, the other thing, I see this is a very, very common problem, all right? And that's how they grip their bicep and whether or not they're framing against themselves. If you just get your fingers here on your bicep, you're going you're gonna to have problems. It's probably going to counter. You want to actually get like a, like a gooseneck over your own arm. That's just going to make your grip so much stronger. So when you get here and you lock, try to roll over the deepest you can. Now, when we do this, don't just stop here. Because what happens when guys start squeezing, they're squeezing, believe it or not, they end up pushing against their own forearm with their forearm. So they can't close the hole, okay? So as I get here, I want to get this sucker up as high as I can. If it cleans up to my shoulder, that's good, okay? If it only gets to here, that's good. If it only gets to here, that's fine. But I don't want to push against myself, okay? Here, slide it up. Now, when you're squeezing, think about how you're squeezing. That space I'm making, this little square I'm making, okay? That's where he's getting choked. And I want to collapse and make that, that square as tight as possible. So, don't just squeeze, collapse your elbows. Pinch your elbows together. Now, bring your elbows to your sternum. Here, now I've made it tight. You can see there's very little space. So I literally want to get here. Okay, so go deep, lock, get a good bite, slide up, get your elbows, pull it tight to your sternum. Okay, that's the grip. Okay, when I'm here, I got it aligned with my chest, Lift, I dip my shoulder to get a re to reach deep, okay? One thing you can do is put your ear on his body. That's one of the check marks. I keep his head down so I can slide and I roll my hand and get a good bite. Now I pinch my elbows and I hug them to my sternum and then I'm gonna twist, okay? Now when I first learned this choke, it was a long time ago and uh, the guy would call it a screw choke. The reason why I call it screw choke is at the end of your grip, you gotta create a little twist. The twist would be, if I'm figure forward here, this elbow is gonna twist to the sky. Not this elbow. Here, this elbow locks and twists to the sky. It doesn't have to be a huge twist. It just gotta move. And what that does, it kinda finishes the choke and makes it tight. Okay, so once you get your grip and you're here, pull it tight and you're gonna kinda twist it up. Now, the leg work on the finish of the choke. I personally like staying on top and uh, driving him forward a little bit. I just like to be on my toes, but there's other options here. So when I'm here and I have the choke, I will drive and lift this. So I'll get good control here. That's what my personal comfort is. But no matter what, I definitely don't want to be back here on my knees because I am giving them a big setup to the counter. The other way that most people finish is they step and hook a leg. That's a good option too. But when they have the choke, they keep the pressure on, they hook it, and they sit underneath, and then they lift the elbow. That's a good option, too. So I'm going to show you what, what it both would look like, okay? So from here, I yep, lock, drive, screw, and flex. That's one, okay? Balance, pressure. The next one, I'm gonna hook inside the leg, and I'm gonna drop to a hip, okay? Um, it's, uh, this side, yeah, not that one. Okay, so, I lock my grip, pressure, hook, and hip. Okay? So, these will give you different options how to finish. 
there's a lot of ways to finish, especially in a scramble uh, with your dodge trip. Okay. Now, I want to put them together for you. Here. I'm in my grip. Cross face lock. I drive, crank the turn. Switch, lock, come in, and finish. There's a lot of control. The whole time I'm really keeping my elbows tight. I'm keeping everything nice and tight. Very important. Okay, so that's that's the front face lock into a dar choke or a bravo choke, switch choke, whatever you want to call it. Okay, thank you.